The research uh, that's part of this larger project is concerned with the linkage between land and water. So we focus on the stream invertebrate community, the critters that live on the stream bottom. And by looking at that community of organisms, you can tell the water quality and you can in turn link it to land use patterns. Any stream is a reflection of its watershed. So if you look at the stream, you're looking also at the quality of the land that feeds water into it. The streams that we study flow off the Mont saint hilaire itself. So it comes through a very pristine forest. And as it hits the valley floor, it moves into farmland and suburban land. And we can then look at the effects of the, the land use on the water quality, the change in water quality coming out of the forest into the valley floor and the different uses of land in the valley. Macroinvertebrates include a, a whole array of different types of species. Um, many of the species that we find are insects. So anything that's larger than half a millimeter, half a millimeter in size is considered a macroinvertebrate. Um, I would say 90% of what we, we will sample um, includes just uh, aquatic forms of insects. And so the types of insects include mayflies, stoneflies, caddisflies, all kinds of other types of flies, um, many of which people would be quite, um, that, that are quite common uh, around us, but we're more familiar with the adult forms than with the aquatic forms. So we're going to be um, sampling macroinvertebrates today in the bottom of this stream. We're using this net that basically captures everything that is larger than half a millimeter in size. What I need you to do is just tell me when 30 seconds are up, because that's the length of time that we're using for our protocol. Okay. And then once the 30 seconds are up, if you can just pull the net up, then we'll move on sure. to the next site. Okay, and go. Okay, so I'm just basically running my hands through the substrate here. Making sure everything goes in the net, really stirring it up. And stop. All right, so we'll just pull it up. There we go. All right, so we're just taking a quick look at what we found today in this sample. And just right away, I can tell that this probably came from a pretty clean site because you can see the case of a caddis fly here. There's no caddis fly in it, but I know that this must have come from this site um, because they get stuck to rocks. So caddis flies are usually relatively sensitive to pollution. So that's an indication that this site was probably in pretty good health. There are a number of different species that are very sensitive to certain disturbances. And so the types of disturbances that we're looking at in um, our study include disturbances caused by agriculture and disturbances caused by suburban developments. And so some of these disturbances can include effects of agrochemicals, uh, like pesticides, herbicides, fungicides. In suburban developments, you might also have erosion, um, effects of fecal coliform from runoff from uh, stormwater sewers. Uh, there are also effects of heavy metals and different types of urban contaminants that can be found in water that eventually make it into stream courses. And these all affect the organisms that we're looking at um, and show up in terms of the identification of the species because some species are more sensitive than others. So water is the great integrator in any landscape. If you know the watershed, and you do know that physically because of the elevations, you can look at the stream as an indicator of how well you've designed that landscape. If the water quality is good and there's a healthy aquatic ecosystem, it's not only good for our water supply and uh, fishing and recreation, it's an indicator that the landscape is good, that we've designed the landscape's use in a way that preserves critical ecosystem services. Take a really simple example with farmland. If around Mont saint hilaire the main crop is maize, and this requires heavy fertilization. And a lot of that fertilization runs in runoff from rain or snow melt into the streams. A lot of the farm fields, because of historical regulation, 
lack any kind of a boundary between the ditch or the stream and the crop itself. So the runoff, the soil erosion, the fertility runs right into the stream, runs into the Richelieu River, runs into the St. Lawrence River and down to the ocean, causing problems all the way along that flow of water. So if we did something as simple as building a hedgerow or a plantation of valuable timber like a walnuts or a, uh, some fruit crop instead of just a corn crop, that strip of forest along each side of the stream or the ditch in the farm field would capture the nutrients and give some yield economically to the farmer, give a, recre a, a corridor for wildlife along the stream side to migrate in and improve the water quality as well as the connectance on the landscape.